Good morning, beloveds. Welcome to Unity. I'm Reverend Marla Mason. I'm so grateful to welcome us all into this virtual room uh, uh, where we are creating a vibration of love. We are here to wake up to open our hearts to being more and more alert to and aware of and expressive of the presence of the infinite. And that is why we come together on Sunday mornings and throughout the week in our classes and other activities, small groups, all kinds of stuff going on to remember who we are and why we are here. This month in particular, we're focusing on two things. One is the idea of community and connection, coming together in community to connect, to support one another on the conscious spiritual path, the path of awakening. Um, uh, and and that, that that kind of connection is in our DNA. It's who we are. We are created out of the one life. And in that life, we are infinitely and intimately connected. And so let us be in the practice of that connection in the realm of form uh, so that we can be uh, uh, greater and greater expressions of that divinity that we are. And then the second focus this month is on our stewardship program. What does it mean to become a steward of unity? What does it mean to serve unity with our financial support, as well as with our time and our consciousness and our energy? Um, and our, our, our theme for our uh, stewardship program this month is love, grow, serve. How do we cultivate a consciousness of love, cultivate a consciousness of growing, cultivate a consciousness of service um, in service to that larger vision of waking up and transforming the world. So that's what we're about this month. Are you in? I'm in. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, uh, I want to um, let you know who is in service to you today. First off, um, thank you, Lynn Zeller, for an amazing meditation service this morning. Absolutely just what I needed. Lynn is one of our prayer chaplains, and Lynn and Lori Coleman, another one of our prayer chaplains, is available at the end of our online gathering here today for prayer support. If you would like to uh, participate in that, you'll learn more later about how you can do that. Uh, thank you, Lynn, for a terrific meditation, and thank you, Lynn and Lori, for serving our community in prayer today. I also want to introduce Rita Schwarting. She is our board host today. She is a terrific, amazing, powerful board meeting. And then I see her there with Zam the puppy dog. So that's pretty fun. That's one of the things I love about doing online uh, uh, church. Isn't it fun to kind of see people? And there's there she is with her beloved and her dog. And that just makes me feel happy to see that. Um, so thank you, uh, Rita, for serving as our board host today. Monica McDowell Elvick is producing everything that's happening here today. You're also going to hear from her later uh, with announcements and a couple of other things. Monica is our uh, center administrator, and I am endlessly grateful for who she is and what she brings to the table. Our guest artist today is Andy Harrison. That's always good news in our community, isn't it? Um, I am just such a big fan. Andy is all about transforming the world through music. He uh, touches my heart every time he joins us. Catherine is um, with him today as well. I'm so grateful to welcome you guys into our virtual love vibration of spiritual truth and spiritual awakening. And Andy is going to set the mood, set the tone today with a song, and then we'll pray in and speak the words of our affirmation. Andy. It's been a long road We've been walking We finally feel it coming to an end Been a hard way been a tough time We finally feel our hearts are on the man And the old game we were playing Can you feel it fall away? Notice the changing Notice the changing Notice the 
So we take this moment to anchor in possibility. We anchor in the infinite. We lift ourselves in mind, in spirit, in body, in awareness into that realm of infinite possibility. And we know that we are agents of that possibility here in human form. And so even in the midst of everything changes, we know that everything is the same, that there is only one life one power, one presence, the life, the power, the presence of infinite possibility. And we live into the manifestation of possibility as love, as beauty, as truth, as inclusion, as grace. 
as we open our hearts and minds this day to the power of the music, the message, the community that we share, all that is about to unfold huh, to support us in moving forward in faith and confidence. I give thanks for those who have said yes today. I give thanks for the infinite potential and possibility of the universal presence that wants only to live itself as us. And so I open this service with a grateful heart and I call it good. And so it is. Amen. And so I'm going to uh, take a moment here to read through our affirmation once. As I read through it, I just invite you to open your heart, to open your mind, to cultivate an attitude and a sense of receptivity, and uh, hear these words, truly hear them at the core of your being, and then I'll invite you to declare them with me. At the center of my being lies the life-giving presence of the infinite. I effortlessly connect with this presence as I joyfully embrace the essence of God in everyone and everything. And so it is. And so having heard these words, having received these words, I invite you now to declare them with me with conviction. At the center of my being lies the life-giving presence of the infinite. I effortlessly connect with this presence as I joyfully embrace the essence of God in everyone and everything. And so it is. Sarah, we've been
Catherine, thank you. Thank you for bringing your love, your consciousness, your skill and your talent and your music to our community. We are so blessed. I'm so grateful for you. And speaking of community, we started this series a few weeks ago, Community and Connection, with the idea that we are inextricably connected, that there is something greater than we are in which we all live and move and breathe and have our being, that this something that we, you know, the shorthand word we use for it is God, but this something is the energetic life presence that animates the universe itself, it animates all things. And we are inextricably connected in this body of isness, in this body of beingness, there is one life. That life is God's life. It is my life now. It is your life now. And it is the collective life that we live. And I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to deepen in this idea every week with you guys. I mean, honestly, that's all we ever talk about, isn't it? We just put different, we put different language around it, different examples, different ideas around it. But ultimately, that is all we ever really talk about. And, and, and we also launched our stewardship ship theme, the idea that in this infinite mind and body of God in which we are inextricably connected, we are called to love. We are called to love one another more deeply. We are called to grow. We are called to grow in consciousness. And we are called to serve. We are called to serve the common good, to make a difference in the world such that the universe itself is ev evolving into its greater goodness. It's it's greater beingness. So, so we are called to love, to grow, to serve in this web of intricate connection in which we live and move and have our being. So we've been talking about that for the last few months, few, few weeks. And, um, and one of the things that we talked about was the art of community, the, the art of being in community. And, and, and I want to remind you of this phrase from Mark Nepo, the author of our book in the book of the month, More Together Than Alone. It's a great read. Get your hands on a copy of that. Um, one of the things he said that is that the art of community is discovering how we are building blocks of that community? How are we building blocks of the community that we are participating in? And you know, it's such an interesting thing. Uh, I, I was realizing as I was thinking about that this morning, you guys literally look like building blocks right now. You are on my screen, little blocks all on top of and next to each other. You literally look like building blocks right now. And and uh, 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 the metaphor is not lost on me that 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 in order for a block to be up here, we have to have a block down here, right? In order for a block to be, uh, 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 what is it, balanced over here in this corner, there has to be a balance over here in this corner. And so, so we are the, we have to find, discover how we are the building blocks in our own community, our own place of being. Um, we are discovering whole new ways in the midst of this pandemic and in the midst of our cultural and political situations, we are discovering whole new ways to be in community with one another, to forward the common good, to love one another, to grow in consciousness and to serve the common good. 
Today, we are specifically talking about the idea of service, serving the common good. And I've shared with you guys our Love, Grow, Serve card. If you don't have one of these, we'd be happy to send it to you. When we're talking about the, the, the principle of serve in our community right now, we are talking about when we give freely of our unique spiritual gifts, our ideas, our time, our expertise, we are giving in the same way God has given to us, graciously and abundantly. We are blessed and we are a blessing such that the world becomes a better place for everyone. When we serve, we bless ourselves and others and transform the world. Little by little by little. And Mahatma Gandhi was supported this, this serve um, uh, uh, principle for us with the quote, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in service to others. The best way to find our place in the universal cosmos in which we are all inextricably connected is to serve some particularized aspect of that consciousness. And when I say particularized aspect, I'm talking about you and me and the cat and all the rest of manifestation that we see. You see, the universe is a realm of infinite, poten infinite potential. We, everything we see are po particularizations of that potential. How can we be of service to the particularization such that we are all lifted and the whole knows itself more and more fully as love, as peace, as joy, as perfection, as wholeness? It's a tall order, but I know that we are up for it because we are here. And we are here at this particular time in our human and cultural evolution and spiritual evolution. And so I wanna invite you to take a moment to think about somebody that you hold as a hero, somebody that, um, uh, that has impacted your life in some way. It might be someone that you know it might be someone that you don't know, but you, but you see them as a hero. You see them as someone who has been of service to you or to the world in a powerful and a meaningful way. So bring to mind that person. And now think of another one. I think most of us have at least two heroes. You know, for me, I think of like my mom is one of my heroes. And, and I think most of you know my mom passed earlier this year. And it has been such an uh, adjustment to, um, to uh, uh, live in the world without her physical presence, but to realize the legacy, the, the energy that she is carries on in me and as me. My mom is my hero because she did so much with so very little. And she loved so big with such a huge heart. Um, so she's one of my heroes. I think of um, Malala is one of my heroes, a woman who can, a young woman who can stay so anchored in love in the face of, you know, such good worldly reason to not be loving. She has, I mean, you know, she has remained anchored in the truth of love. Um, I have a new hero this week, Stacey Abrams, is, um, is one of my new heroes. Uh, you know, she's a hero to me because she's a woman who took loss. Um, and if you don't know who she is, Google her, Stacey Abrams. She is a woman who lost something. She lost an election. And I don't know, sometimes when I lose things, I'm interested in, you know, going and reading my book or watching TV or taking a nap. She transformed the energy of that loss into registering literally tens of thousands of people to vote and made such a difference in the world. She's one of my heroes right now. So who are your heroes? Who are the people that you just kind of go, you know, that person made a difference. And ask yourself, what did they do that you see them now as a hero? Who were they being? What's the energy that they were embodying? And how did they serve you? And how did they serve others? Begin to reflect on these questions. And I think what you might learn is that these people that we hold as heroes are always serving something greater. 
my mother was so powerfully in service to her family so powerfully in service to her family and she saw us as a living entity and used her gifts and used her grace and used her heart, her loving, loving heart to serve something greater, to serve her family. Malala is serving the planet by saying, yeah, you know what, you can shoot me in the head, but you cannot take away my capacity to love. She's serving something greater. Stacey Abrams said, yeah, you know what, you can, you can have me lose, but I am not going to allow that to prevent me of being in service anyway to the greater whole. And so in this way, these people, remember we said earlier, uh, the art of community is finding out, you know, how am I a building block for community? These are individuals who, who, who served as building blocks for their community and lifted all through the power of their expressing their divine gifts by being of service to the greater thing, the greater something the oneness, the infinity of the universal presence by being of service to that. They are transforming the world. And so we serve from the idea of that greater place. And what is that greater place? I mean, we're back to the, like the very first thing we talked about. That greater something is the one mind, the one heart, the one beingness of God. And when we serve that, we are serving from that. Do you get how it's a cyclical thing? When we serve uh, 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 the heart of God, we are serving as and from the heart of God. And what a beautiful notion that is that we live in a cyclical universe that, that, that in the one heart and mind of God, even though it might look like little separate activities, Malala and Stacey Abrams and Noreen and all these different, you know, it's like, it's like, it is life giving to itself. And when we engage in life giving to itself, we are duplicating the giving nature of life. And I know I'm talking in circles, but that's the nature of God, right? <laughs> you got to talk in circles if you're going to talk about God. Because we can only guess, you know, we can only look out in the world and see what we see and and, 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 oh, you know what? I think that must be the way the universe works because look, when people are loving, more love generates itself. And so, so we have a purpose. Each one of us has a purpose. And I don't mean a purpose like it's my purpose to blah, 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 blah. I mean, our collective and our individual purpose is to make the world a better place for everyone. To give in the way, in the same way that the infinite presence has given. Our purpose is to duplicate that giving nature of spirit such that it can express more and more fully. And then in that greater idea, in the idea of serving the greater, we have an individual way that we serve because we've been given individual gifts, a set of gifts that allows us to fulfill that, that, that purpose in our own corner of the universe. And, and our willingness to show up, to circulate, to give, to serve, leads to a world powerfully transformed by our own waking up, by our own, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in service to others. The, the world is powerfully transformed by good. Uh, I'm sorry, the world is powerfully transformed toward good by our willingness to express the gifts we've been given and wake up. Your spiritual evolution serves the world. What a beautiful idea. It's all about me. <laughs> and what looks like doing something for the world or doing something for my neighbor or doing something for my community or doing something for you know, the food bank or doing something for my political campaign, what looks like all of that is actually 
doing something for the infinite presence for the infinite mind because we are inextricably connected there is only one thing happening and we're just little busy bees moving that infinite potential into form from the heart of love drawing out the creative potential of the universe and that might look like setting up a chair in the library for a class it might look like you know uh campaigning it might look like serving at the food bank it might look like i know we you know knitting prayer shawls whatever that looks like we are drawing out the creative potential of the universe and bringing it into form through the very heart of love oh what a beautiful idea what a beautiful idea i'm so grateful for this circular nature of the universe you know <laughs> And so what we have here is an opportunity to ask ourselves, how are we serving? How are we serving in the world? How are we circulating that divine nature of the infinite? How are we particularizing love in the world? And, you know, I got to tell you, sometimes I'm not particularizing love in the world. Sometimes I'm particularizing separation. Sometimes I'm particularizing fear. But do you see how those are born here in the land of duality, those are born in my belief that I am separate. And I have to tell you, when I think, you know, when I, you know, when I think of the building block thing and I'm down here somewhere and I think I'm not supported and I think I'm not part of something greater than I am. Yes, boy, fear. It's scary. And yet it's not the truth. I just can't see the truth right now. Right? Because we're always connected. You can't get out. The infinite is infinite. If the infinite is infinite, you can't get out of it because there's nothing outside of the infinite. So even if you think you're not connected or feel like you're not connected, I got news for you. You're connected. And what a beautiful idea. And the only thing, Emma Curtis Hopkins says, you know, the only thing between me and my good is an idea. The only thing between you and your connection to the infinite is an idea. And if you're feeling disconnected, the place to start is to change your mind, not to deny the feeling. The feeling is good information, right? I don't, you know, don't, don't, oh, I feel unconnected. Oh, well, Reverend Marla told me to feel connected. No, that's not what I said. Feel the feeling and begin to shift your awareness that somehow at this point in time doesn't remember that you're connected. And, and we do that, you know, one of the ways we do that is through service. Mahatma Gandhi, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in service to others. We begin to remember our connection when we begin to practice our connection. And community is a terrific place to do that, isn't it? I feel so grateful to have you all. And, and you know, we're figuring out in the midst of COVID-19, like what does connection look like? How, what does community look like? How do we, because it's all different now, right? And, and I have to say, it's actually uh, the blessing of COVID-19 and isolating and having to close our building and all of those things. The blessing is, is it's forcing us into thinking more creatively about what community means and how we stay connected in community. And so that piece of it, I can get really super grateful for. How about you? You know, and by looking for you know, what is the gratitude? And we're going to talk about this more next week. What is the gratitude? Where can I put my energy um, that is life affirming and positive? You see, I begin to remember my connectedness instead of camping out in my unconnectedness. And then my feelings of being disconnected start to shift, right? So, you know, you can't let your feelings tell you what you're thinking. You got to let your thinking tell yourself what you're thinking and your feelings will shift. Your feelings will evolve. And if we're really going to make the world a better place for everybody, 
we have to start right here in our own hearts and in our own minds. So how are you called to serve? And right now, I actually want to focus particularly, oh my gosh, Tony the kitty. <laughs> Hi, baby kitty. Uh, right now, I want to focus particularly on how are you called to serve at Unity? And um, uh, uh, the idea of serving the common good here at Unity. And there are two things I want to focus on. One is with your time, right? Setting up the chair in the library, you know? Uh, 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 you know, uh, facilitating a small group, becoming a prayer chaplain and supporting others in prayer, uh, working in the, in the gardens at the center right now while our building is closed. There's just all kinds of ways that we have that you can serve the greater good, that you can serve the common good in our community with your time and with your consciousness and with your energy and with your prayer. And I also want to talk about how do you serve and you know we do this once a year so here it goes, how do we serve our community with our financial good, because. Um, uh, uh, you know transforming the world costs money y'all <laughs> right transforming our individual lives and transforming the world has a budget that goes with it and our mission is waking up. And our vision is a world transformed by a whole bunch of awakened people. And so I got to say, this is a vision and a mission that is worthy of my support. It is worthy of your support. It is worthy of my financial support. And as we move into 2021, I have to say there's a fair amount of uncertainty. Your board of trustees has been working on the budget for 2021. And, and we're doing that, you know, from a place of, uh, of really doing our best to stay anchored in that, that, that consciousness of oneness and unity and infinite potential. And, and remember, we talked last week about over here is the realm of fragmentation and over here is the realm of complete unity and oneness. And you know, the, the, the realm of budget planning happens toward this end of the continuum, right? It happens here in, in, in the realm of form. Budget planning happens in the, in the, um, in the world of duality. And that's okay, because remember, we talked about the whole continuum, and the whole continuum is good. So many times, especially in New Thought, we like to make fragmentation and duality wrong, and unity and oneness right. But the whole continuum is existing in the mind and the body of the infinite, and a whole bunch of stuff needs to be done over here in the realm of oneness and unity. And I'm sure that your own budget planning and your own financial plan uh, uh, management is happening here in the realm of, 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 of duality, but we support it with a consciousness of oneness. We support it with knowing that that although there's the appearance of this continuum, the continuum exists in an infinite whole. And, and, and so, so over here, you know, the board right now is working on our budget planning for 2021. And you know, there's a lot of uncertainty. You know, we have to make certain assumptions, right? Like when is our building gonna open? Cause I don't know. Um, and so <laughs> like, I don't know, because our expenses and our income change when our building is open. And so, um, so there's a lot of uncertainty, but there are two things I know for sure. We live in an infinite unity and that infinite unity is inclined to good. It is inclined to evolution. It is inclined to ever expanding and growing toward a greater good, a greater wholeness. It is the nature of the universe to evolve and evolution is always upward. Ernest Holmes says evolution is always upward. It's never backwards. There's no such thing really as devolution. And so we are evolving into a greater and greater experience of universal good. I know that for sure. And I know if it's true of the universe, it must be true of our community, of our spiritual center. So that's the first thing I know for sure in this dual realm of, of, of uncertainty right now. The second thing I know is that unity is here to support us, even in the midst of this uncertainty. And unity is here to support us because of you. It's not here to support us because of me. 
or because of, you know, one person, only Dick, only Susan, only Laurie. No, it's here to support us in this realm of uncertainty because of all of us, because we have all come together and said, yes, we want a spiritual community to support us in the evolution of co in consciousness toward a greater sense and awareness of oneness. We have said yes to supporting a spiritual community that is all about awakening people and transforming the world. So even in this realm of uncertainty, I know that God is good and all is well, and unity is here, <laughs> unity, that's three. Unity is here to support us in continuing to evolve into that greater awareness because of all of us, not any one of us, and we are inextricably connected. And so I'm gonna fill you in on where we are right now in our stewardship program. Uh, right now, we have 31 pledges in the amount of $128,075. I'm thrilled about that, you guys. I, I'm like, I'm super thrilled about that. 31 of you have said, yes, I am in. I understand that we are inextricably connected and that our journey toward greater and greater wholeness is supported by this powerful community. And that vision, its vision of an awakened world that works for everybody is worth my support. Now our goal, as you know, is um, 70 people who have said yes and $220,000. And I have to say, I'm feeling super thrilled. We are more than halfway to that goal. What a beautiful thing. I Thank you. Those of you who have said yes and have moved us forward. And now it's time because in the next couple of weeks, we gotta be finalizing and approving the 2021 budget. It's time for the other 40 of you. And I have to say, we um, uh, we have 70 people this year, 71 actually people this year who have made a pledge and are living into that pledge. So this is not pie in the sky. This is, it's a, it, it, given the amount of uncertainty, it does feel like a, a, a bit of a stretch, but you know, a stretch is always a good thing, isn't it? You always want to be expanding your mental equivalent a little bit. You always want to be pushing up against the edges of what you believe is possible because that's how we learn and grow. And so, so this, um, this goal is more than doable. It is beyond doable. Um, we've already done it. So it's time to say, yes, this vision of an awakened world that works for everyone is worthy of my support. This community to which I am inextricably connected is worthy of my support. You know, I said the first day with our stewardship theme, love, grow, serve, I'm inviting you into a way of being in the world, a way in which we love one another, in which we are committed to growing in consciousness, to evolving in consciousness, and in which we are committed to serving the common good. And as we embody that here in realm, we are particularizing into form the potential in the infinite void is being particularized into form by our willingness to be something, to be a place where love, shows up where growth is who we are and where service to the common good calls us forward. And so the art of community is finding which building block we are. And, and I wanna invite you into the awareness that you are a financial building block of this community, as well as a service building block of this community, as well as the a building block that we serve with our programs and with our activities. And so what I'd like to do right now is invite you into a little spiritual practice. And bring your attention to your breath as you join me in consciousness, for we recognize that although we may appear to be in separate homes, separate rooms, all over the greater 
Seattle area and even around the world, we may appear to be separate, but there is one thing happening, an infinite power and presence that we call God, the living one, the energy of the universal beingness, the isness of God. And we breathe in our awareness of this truth and we bring to mind our heroes, those who have been of service to the world, those who have made a difference, those who have served something greater. And then as you bring someone to mind, I just invite you to begin to identify with the consciousness that this person brings to planet Earth. Begin to identify with the awareness of our inextricable connection. Allow the barriers of division to fall away. As you open your heart, your awareness, your mind to the very beingness of God as you. And in this consciousness, I invite you to ask yourself now, how am I called? to be the presence of God in financial support of this community. I am God with hands and feet. I am God with a wallet. I am God with a bank account. How am I called to serve the greater good in financial support of this community? And simply allow the infinite presence to inform you as you ask yourself now how am I called to serve in form how am I called to give my time my energy my essence in service to this community And you simply allow the information to make itself known to you. For there is only one mind, one heart. God's mind, God's heart is your heart, your mind now. And in the consciousness of your inextricable connection with the whole, make your commitment now to supporting this community so that we may be about our mission. Of awakening people and transforming the world. Now give thanks for the information that's been given you here give thanks for your ever expanding consciousness of your oneness with the infinite, give thanks. That the power and the presence and the love of God is particularized as you and you know it. And so I close this message grateful, clear, confident that God is good and all is well and unity makes a difference. And so it is, amen.
What makes the difference in what will fill this space? What is the best use of this time? What is the best use of this heart and of this mind? To always do the most exciting pain. Energy of love to always bring. To notice the perfection that is always in. Right now, to let go of the thoughts in the way. Expecting nothing here to go or stay. To notice the What is the meaning of this fear? What is it here to show me, to make more clear? Where are these trials leading to? What is the reason here to continue through? To always do the most exciting And thank you, Reverend Marla, for the message <clears throat> that I don't know about the rest of you, but I really needed to hear today. It is my privilege and pleasure to serve on the Board of Trustees of our community. And it's this time in our service where we give of our love off offerings and tithes, knowing the abundance that is ours to share. Please join me in the offering affirmation. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. And so I give thanks for these gifts. I give thanks for the infinite source that provides so abundantly for us as individuals and for unity as a community. I give thanks for the infinite intelligence that so enlivens us. I consecrate these gifts to the good use of this center, knowing that we are deeply and richly blessed, and so it is. Amen. Good morning, everyone. 
My name is Monica McDowell Elvig. I'm your center administrator. We welcome you this morning. We welcome you with an open heart. We are so glad you are here. If you are visiting with us for the first time virtually, we welcome you. We open our hearts to you. We ask you to consider whether Unity of Bellevue might be a place for you to grow in your spiritual evolution and whether it's a place for you to discover and to express your unique gifts that have been divinely bestowed on you. So we, uh, we have some um, uh, gifts for you, free gifts for you, if you would like to uh, receive them. Uh, the best way to um, connect with us is online. And if you go to our website, unityofbellevue.org, the bottom of every page is a sign up sheet for our um, our weekly e-newsletter that comes out every Thursday morning. And if you do that, I'll get your email. I can uh, correspond with you. And if you would like that, our welcome packet with some free gifts, I'm happy to send that to you. Uh, you can also just reach out to us via email or phone call. We'd love to hear from you. Some of our online offerings this week, Tuesday night, seven o'clock, I am leading a breathwork practice group. That is for anyone, uh, whether you've had any experience or not, it is by love offering. You need to register though to get the Zoom link and you can do that on our website under events or you can do it from the link on our newsletter. I'd love to see you. This Wednesday, our Wednesday Community Connect at 1 p.m. Reverend Marla leads that and it's a time for us to check in with each other midweek to see how we're doing during this continuing pandemic and to help us stay focused on spiritual principles and practices. The Zoom link for that you can find on our website, unityofbellevue.org slash launch, or you can uh, click on the button at the top of every page that says Sunday and online gatherings. Also this uh, week online is the men's group. They are meeting Saturday morning, 8.30 to 10. The Zoom link is on that same page as the Wednesday Community Connect group. It is a time for men to share and uh, have spiritual support. So please join them. Uh, some uh, I posted some links right before I came on. The first link is for um, our online pledge form. You should have gotten one in the mail, but if you didn't or uh, you've misplaced it, uh, you can um, use the link uh, to uh, fill out your pledge form online. You can also find the link on our webpage and our newsletter. So uh, whatever works best and easiest for you, we just want to make it um, as easy for you as possible. Also, we have um, our new cookbook, our, our famous family favorites e-cookbook is available. It, we suggest $10 donation for each copy that you uh, download and share. I've also now made it available on Amazon as a Kindle uh, for uh, buying and sharing that way as well. Uh, just some of the features that are in it. If you haven't bought yours yet and haven't seen what's available, we've got kid-friendly recipes. We've got our Taster's Choice Award winners on there. Ken Patterson, our own Ken Patterson, has written an excellent wine pairing guide. And on the Word document and on the Kindle version, the index of the recipes at the end are hyperlinked within the document. So you can just jump around really easily to all the recipes. It's awesome. There's also a PDF download for those of you who would prefer that. Our uh, book of the month, More Together Than Alone by Mark Nepo is available. You can purchase that on the website under events, book of the month. I'm also, um, putting um, an online bookstore together. I hope to launch that this week so that um, our bookstore is available um, all the time for you. And um, we're also hoping to have some holiday gifts on there. We're not gonna have an arts and crafts fair this year. So we hope to have a, a little bit of a, some holiday features on there. You can do curbside pickup or we can ship. Uh, and our prayer chaplains today. Our prayer chaplains are Lori Coleman and Lynn Zeller. They are happy to pray with you any day of the week. If you would um, like them to pray with you and for you, you can send them prayer requests at prayerchaplains at unityofbellevue.org, or you can fill out the prayer request form on our website under the prayer page. They will also be uh, staying on after service for our virtual prayer circle. 
uh, that um, that'll just give a couple of minutes for us to wind up the service and then they'll be on uh, that is a confidential uh, prayer circle and um, they are happy to pray with you I believe that's everything Reverend Marla have a great week everyone beautiful so as we prepare to close everybody um, thank you for showing up, for saying yes to being part of this community. We are indeed connected, and I am super grateful to have this place to practice that awareness with you. Do please note that uh, Mon Monica did post the links. Uh, make your pledge, and the board can get on with getting our uh, budget fully planned for 2021 so that we can continue to offer all of the amazing services and programs and activities that we do. And we'll be expanding even more after the first of the year, particularly in the realm of small groups. So um, uh, thank you for saying yes, and thank you for being such powerful resources of blessing and of support for awakening people and transforming the world. I'm so grateful. Let's close with the prayer for protection. It goes something like this. It goes exactly like this. Please declare with me, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Have a great week, everybody. I'm super grateful for you. Much love. Bye-bye. Stick around for prayer circle.